letter from Gitmo, a detainee writes from day 65 of his hunger strike. Last month, on March 15, I was sick in the prison hospital and refused to be fed. A team from the ERF, Extreme Reaction Force, a squad of eight military police officers in right gear burst in. They tied my hands and feet to the bed. They forcibly inserted an IV into my hand. I spent 26 hours in this state, tied to the bed. During this time, I was not permitted to go to the toilet. They inserted a catheter, which was painful, degrading and unnecessary. I was not even permitted to pray. I will never forget the first time they passed this feeding tube up my nose. I can't describe how painful it is to be force fed this way. As it was thrust in, it made me feel like throwing up. I wanted to vomit, but I couldn't. There was agony in my chest, throat and stomach. I had never experienced such pain before. I would not wish this cruel punishment upon anyone. I am still being force fed. Two times a day, they tie me to a chair in my cell. My arms, legs and head are strapped down. I never know when they will come. Sometimes they come during the night, as late as 11 p.m. when I'm sleeping. There are so many of us on hunger strike now that there are not enough qualified medical staff members to carry out the force feedings. Nothing is happening at regular intervals. They are feeding people around the clock just to keep up. Thank you very much for coming. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Alusia. I've started the justice campaign a couple of years ago, primarily to bring light to the situation of the Australians who were detained in Guantanamo Bay. So at the moment, there are 166 men who are still imprisoned there. It's now been 11 years, a whole 11 years. 89 of them have never been charged with anything and have been cleared for release, and yet they still remain. Between 102 and 130 are now on hunger strike, and about 30 of them are being force fed. Now the UN has said that this amounts to torture and that it's cruel and inhuman and degrading treatment and that it shouldn't be happening. So we're here today in solidarity with the men who are still detained, who uh, have never been given a trial, have never been charged. And we're here to say that we oppose Guantanamo Bay and torture and that there should be some accountability for what happened. Jumar Al Dossari, a 33-year-old Brahma national, is the father of a young daughter. He has been held at Guantanamo Bay for over five years. In addition to being detained without charge or trial, Dossari has been subjected to a range of physical and psychological abuses. He has been held in solitary confinement since the end of 2003 and, according to the US military, has tried to kill himself 12 times while in prison. On one occasion, he was found by his lawyer hanging by the neck and bleeding from a gash to his arm. Take my blood, take my death shroud and remnants of my body. Take photographs of my corpse at the grave, lonely. Send them to the world, to the judges and to the people of conscious. Send them to the principled men and the fair-minded and let them bear the guilty burden before the world of this innocent soul. Let them bear the burden before the children and before history of this wasted, sinless soul, of the soul which has suffered at the hands of the protectors of peace. I've got a message from David Hicks, who's a former Guantanamo Bay detainee. He said to say thank you very much for everyone uh, coming today. He's really horrified that Guantanamo is still open. And he's, he's here in spirit and he says thank you very much for, for everyone who came today. Sheikha Abdul Arama Amir is a Saudi Arabian citizen and British resident who's been detained at Guantanamo Bay since 2002. The US military alleges that he has ties to Al-Qaeda, apparently because of his work in Afghanistan for a Saudi charity, the Al-Haramin Foundation, suspected of funneling money to terrorist organizations. A leader among the Guantanamo detainees, 
Amer helped broker an end to one of the hunger strikes. He elicited a concession from the military that it would allow the detainees to form a grievance committee and treat them in a manner consistent with the Geneva Conventions. In September 2005, just days after the grievance committee was formed, the military disbanded it and sent Armer to solitary confinement, where he remains today. To prevent the detainees from seeing their lawyers and from letting the world know what's going on, they're actually doing invasive body cavity searches of the guys. So if they want to have a phone conversation with their lawyers, they are being subjected to internal searches, so they're having fingers inserted into body cavities everywhere, so they don't want to talk to their lawyers. So what's really happening is not getting out because no one has access to them. And that's the point of Guantanamo. It is incommunicado detention. It is cruel, inhuman, degrading. It is torture. It is there to torture people. They fight for peace. Peace, they say. Peace of mind. Peace on earth. Peace of what kind? I see them talking, arguing, fighting. What kind of peace are they looking for? Why do they kill? Nine people have now died in Guantanamo. We have a situation where people are dying in the prison, their bodies are being sent home eventually, they're so badly decomposed that no independent autopsy can be carried out. This is absolutely appalling because we will never know why a lot of these men have died. We will never know what's really going on. And this is just outrageous. The men who are still there, they're on hunger strike because they know that the only realistic way out of Guantanamo now is to die. That is what we've come to now. You are more likely to leave there in a body bag than you are to be transferred out of Guantanamo. It is horrifying that in 2013 we have this situation in a democracy. We know that Obama has the power to close Guantanamo. He has the power to transfer detainees out of Guantanamo Bay. He has that power. This, the National Defence Authorisation Act has a clause which means that he can do it. So by saying that Congress has tied his hands is absolutely untrue. Today, so today, once again, to, to, today, so that's why we're here today. We're here in solidarity with the men who are still over there and we're here to say that it is not okay what's happening. And Obama, you can do something about it and we're hoping that that's what you'll do, is release those cleared for release. Can I ask you a question? Uh, what's happening uh, in Guantanamo Bay? I thought there's been a, a hunger strike now for 100 days. And who, who are the people there? Who are they? Yeah. Well, there's 166 men. 89 have been cleared for release. Um, some of them were cleared for release under the Bush administration. But because of the politics, uh, Obama's not releasing them. Are they all Muslims? Uh, yes. From which countries? Uh, the majority are from Yemen. So because of the situation in Yemen, that's one reason why Obama's saying that he won't release them because he's, uh, he's saying that the, the political situation in that country is, um, is a bit too... Um, volatile? Volatile, volatile yes. Yeah. Well, actually, I'm the chairman of Human Rights Foundation in Australia. Oh, oh that's great. Thank you for coming. Yes, Thank you. and uh, the only thing that I would like to find out, how come that Obama promised that Guantanamo Bay will be shut? And that was an assurance he gave to the world. And I'm really surprised that he has not kept his promise. And especially in the second term. Yes. We don't need torture in the world. Yes. We need peace. Yes. And it's sad to see those people suffering. They've got only one life. They've got only one, one way of thinking. 
happiness for their family. Yes. So I hope the international politicians will be able to convince the Obama administration to do something, not by imprisonment that they can create peace, but with peaceful means, by extending their hands to their enemies or friends, that they can achieve a real peace. And this is from Human Rights Foundation of Australia. Thank you. What is your Thank name, you. sir? My name is Joseph Tevada. Thank you for coming. I speak fluent uh, Arabic and uh, I speak fluent Hebrew and uh, I would like to see a peaceful world and that's what we need. Can you say something for us in, in Arabic for, because this will go out to the whole world? Ehna Aizin Salam Fil Alam Al Alam Al Arabi Wal Alam Al Israeli Wukulina Aizin Naish Fil Salam Wa Bit Tariya Al Wahid Tariya Al Wahida إن العالم ممكن تسمعنا وتسمع حقوق الإنسان بالطريقة السلام شكراً 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 <تصفيق> 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 That's your number. Yes. Yeah. So I, uh, Alicia <laughs> Brooks. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what organization or not? You don't yeah. have any organization. Yeah, it's called the Justice Campaign. Mm. So yeah, it's um, primarily around uh, what happened to David Hicks, the Australian. Yeah, 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 So, yeah. so are you? Uh, I mean, are you involved with David, David Hicks? I'm his wife. You're his wife? Yes. Wow, wow. <laughs> it's really incredible. Dear Lucia, David Hicks and our sisters and brothers in peace in Australia. We, in Witness Against Torture and countless others in the United States, stand in solidarity with your important demonstration at the US Consul General in Sydney. For weeks now, hundreds of Americans have engaged in solidarity fasts and held vigils and rallies in cities and towns. We have written thousands of letters to the detained men and called daily the White House and the US military. We have been arrested at a federal courthouse and last week leading critics of Guantanamo, including the, from the US military and attorneys with clients currently on hunger strike, briefed Congress about the situation at the prison and the urgent need to close it. On May 1st, a military veteran began an open-ended, water-only hunger strike. The hunger strike may have originally begun, according to reporting by the Post Peter Finn and Julie Tate, when some guards inspecting a cell desecrated a Quran while looking through it. It's not clear what precisely may have happened, although the military says the Qurans are only touched by special cultural advisors who are typically themselves Muslim. But whatever began this hunger strike, camp officials say small strikes are common. Perhaps more significant is the deeper anxiety that it seems to have exacerbated to such an alarming extent. Dozens of Guantanamo's 166 prisoners have actually been cleared for release, but the Obama administration still have not found a country or countries to release them into, and even recently shuttered the office responsible for this. So the prisoners are left in a state of limbo, locked up with no clear path out. A Red Cross statement last month called the hunger strike and clashes the direct result of uncertainty faced by the detainees. 
In his op-ed, Al Hassan seems to hint that the hunger strike is a response to the Obama's administration failure to secure his release. The only reason I am still here is that President Obama refuses to send any detainees back to Yemen, he writes. I do not want to die here, but until President Obama and Yemen's president do something, that is what I risk every day.